For years, aircraft designers believed speed problems could be solved with stronger engines and heavier structures. When planes became unstable at high speed, they reinforced airframes and accepted rising drag as unavoidable. What they did not realise was that they were fighting forces they did not understand. Hugh L. Dryden proved that speed was not limited by power, but by the lack of knowledge about how air actually behaves. By the early 1930s, aviation appeared to be progressing in a predictable way. Aircraft engines were producing more power, airframes were becoming stronger, and manufacturing quality was improving steadily. Engineers believed that higher speed and better performance would naturally follow these mechanical advances. When problems appeared, the response was consistent. Add power, reinforce structures, and accept additional drag as an unavoidable cost of progress. However, as aircraft began operating closer to their performance limits, this logic started to fail. Speed increases became inefficient. Drag rose faster than velocity. Fuel consumption increased sharply without proportional gains. Aircraft that behaved reliably at lower speeds became unstable as velocity increased. Control surfaces lost effectiveness, vibrations appeared, and structural loads fluctuated unpredictably. These issues were not isolated failures. They appeared across different aircraft types and designs. The e underlying cause was not weak engineering or insufficient power. It was incomplete understanding of airflow at high speed. At the time, aerodynamic theory worked well at low and moderate speeds, where air could be treated as largely incompressible and predictable. As aircraft approached higher velocities, especially near the upper limits of propeller-driven flight, air behaved differently. Pressure changes caused density variations. Flow became unstable. Turbulence increased. Engineers knew these effects existed, but they lacked reliable tools to measure, describe, and predict them. This was the environment in which Hugh L. Dryden entered aviation research. Dryden was born in 1898 in Baltimore, Maryland. He was trained not as an aircraft designer or pilot, but as a physicist. He completed his doctorate at Johns Hopkins University at an unusually young age, specialising in fluid dynamics. His background shaped his approach. Dryden was not interested in modifying aircraft to fix symptoms. He wanted to understand the physical behaviour of air itself. In the early 1930s, Dryden joined the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, known as NACA. NACA was responsible for providing scientific foundations for US aviation. Its role was not to build airplanes, but to conduct controlled experiments and produce data that manufacturers and the military could rely on. Dryden became one of the organization's leading figures in aerodynamic research. One of the most serious problems Dryden addressed was turbulence. Turbulence increased drag, disrupted lift, and imposed unpredictable loads on aircraft structures. At high speed, even small disturbances could trigger large performance losses. Engineers could observe turbulence indirectly through vibration and instability, but they lacked a quantitative framework to analyze it. Without that framework, design decisions were based on trial, error, and conservative assumptions. Dryden focused on studying turbulent flow with unprecedented precision. He conducted systematic experiments on boundary layers, the thin region of airflow directly adjacent to aircraft surfaces, where friction and instability originate. His work demonstrated that boundary layer behaviour played a central role in drag formation and flow breakdown at high speed. Small changes in surface condition, pressure gradients or airflow quality could have outsized effects on performance. Dryden also worked to formalise turbulence mathematically. He helped connect experimental observations to measurable physical quantities, allowing engineers to predict how turbulence would develop under specific conditions. This transformed turbulence from a vague danger into a physical phenomenon that could be studied and managed. Another critical area of Dryden's work involved compressibility effects. As airspeed increased, air could no longer be treated as incompressible. Pressure changes caused density variations that altered airflow behaviour, 
around wings and control surfaces. These effects produced sharp increases in drag and instability even before aircraft reached the speed of sound. Many engineers misinterpreted these symptoms as mechanical or structural problems. Dryden's research clarified that these instabilities were aerodynamic in nature. Aircraft were not failing because they were weak. They were failing because engineers did not yet understand the regimes in which they were operating. This distinction mattered. It shifted the focus from reinforcing structures to understanding airflow physics. Dryden's contributions did not result in a single visible invention. Instead, they reshaped how aerodynamic research was conducted, when tunnel testing became more rigorous, measurement techniques improved, data reliability increased. Engineers began designing aircraft based on validated aerodynamic behaviour rather than assumptions carried over from low-speed flight. By the late 1930s, NAKA research influenced aircraft development across the United States. Designers were better equipped to anticipate high-speed behaviour and avoid catastrophic instability. This progress occurred quietly, without public recognition, but it was essential. As the world moved closer to large-scale war, aircraft would be pushed harder than ever before. They would fly faster, carry heavier loads, and operate under extreme conditions. Without a clear understanding of turbulence, compressibility, and high-speed airflow, increased power would have reduced reliability instead of improving capability. Hugh L. Dryden ensured that this did not happen. He did not make aircraft faster by adding force. He made speed possible by explaining how air behaves under stress. Before aviation could scale safely, it needed physics, not more power. Dryden provided that foundation before the war demanded it. What followed would depend on that invisible work. By the early 1940s, aviation had reached a critical transition point. Aircraft were flying faster, higher, and farther than ever before, yet engineers were increasingly constrained by phenomena they could not fully predict. Compressibility effects, shock formation, and boundary layer instability were no longer theoretical curiosities. They were operational problems affecting fighters, bombers, and experimental aircraft alike. Hugh L. Dryden's work moved directly into this space, where performance was no longer limited by engines or structures, but by the behavior of air itself. Unlike engineers focused on aircraft configuration, Dryden specialized in the physics governing airflow. At the National Bureau of Standards, and later within advisory roles tied closely to NACA, he worked on understanding how air behaved at high subsonic and transonic speeds. His research addressed compressible flow, turbulence, and boundary layer transition, areas where small, invisible changes produced. Disproportionate effects on drag, stability, and control. One of Dryden's most important contributions was his work on boundary layer behavior. Engineers knew that airflow near the surface of an aircraft could transition from smooth, laminar, to chaotic, turbulent, but the triggers for this transition were poorly understood. Dryden helped quantify how surface roughness, pressure gradients, and speed influenced this shift. His findings demonstrated that turbulence was not random. It followed physical rules that could be measured, predicted, and managed. This understanding was critical for high-speed flight. As aircraft accelerated, even minor disturbances on a surface, panel gaps, rivets, paint irregularities, could destabilize airflow, increase drag, and amplify compressibility effects. Dryden's work showed that aerodynamic efficiency depended not only on shape, but on precision and control at scales invisible to the naked eye. This reframed how engineers thought about manufacturing quality, maintenance standards, and aerodynamic testing. Dryden also played a central role in advancing compressible flow research. As aircraft approached Mach 1, traditional aerodynamic models broke down. Pressure changes propagated differently. Shock waves formed abruptly. Control effectiveness changed without warning. 
Dryden contributed to the theoretical and experimental framework that explained these effects, providing engineers with tools to anticipate drag rise and stability loss before aircraft ever flew. Importantly, Dryden's influence was not limited to equations or reports. He shaped how research itself was conducted. He emphasised rigorous experimentation, careful validation and scepticism toward oversimplified models. Wind tunnel testing, flow measurement techniques and data interpretation standards improved under this philosophy. Engineers were encouraged to trust measured behaviour over assumptions carried over from lower speed flight regimes. During World War II, these insights fed directly into aircraft development and refinement. Fighters operating near their performance limits benefited from improved understanding of compressibility effects. Bombers flying long range missions gained efficiency from better surface control and drag management. Even when Dryden's work was not cited explicitly, it informed the aerodynamic standards guiding design decisions across multiple programs. After the war, as jet propulsion accelerated aviation into new regimes, Dryden's contributions became even more relevant. Jet aircraft did not eliminate aerodynamic problems, they intensified them. Higher speeds magnified the consequences of airflow instability, shock interaction and turbulent transition. Dryden's research helped ensure that engineers entered this new era with a scientific foundation rather than trial and error improvisation. At a strategic level, Dryden influenced how the United States approached aeronautical research. He advocated for coordination between laboratories, standardized testing methodologies, and long-term investigation of fundamental problems rather than short-term fixes. This approach prevented aviation progress from fragmenting into isolated solutions and ensured that knowledge accumulated systematically. Hugh L. Dryden did not design famous aircraft. He did not introduce dramatic shapes or visible innovations. His work operated beneath the surface, defining the rules that all high-speed aircraft had to obey. By making the invisible behaviour of air measurable and predictable, he removed uncertainty that had quietly limited aviation performance. The result was not a single breakthrough moment, but a sustained increase in reliability, efficiency and confidence at high speed. Aircraft could be pushed closer to their limits because those limits were finally understood. In an era when speed itself was becoming a strategic asset, that understanding mattered as much as any engine or weapon. Dryden's legacy in aviation is therefore not attached to a silhouette or a record. It is embedded in the discipline that governs how aircraft interact with air when performance margins disappear. He ensured that high-speed flight was not just possible, but controllable. Hugh L. Dryden's influence did not peak during World War II. Chernain is a Mopsid II. In many ways, it became more consequential afterward, when aviation entered an era where speed was no longer experimental but operational. As aircraft routinely approached and exceeded transonic conditions, the aerodynamic problems Dryden had studied moved from research laboratories into everyday flight envelopes. The difference was that engineers now understood what they were facing. After the war, aviation progressed rapidly into the jet age. Aircraft flew faster, higher, and for longer durations. These conditions magnified every aerodynamic imperfection. Small errors in surface finish, pressure distribution, or flow stability produced large penalties in drag, fuel consumption, and control. Dryden's work ensured that these effects were no longer mysterious. They were quantifiable and manageable. One of Dryden's most important long-term impacts was institutional rather than technical. He became a central figure in shaping how the United States organized aeronautical research. As a senior scientific administrator and later as NASA's first deputy administrator, Dryden emphasized continuity between theory, experimentation and application. Research was not meant to chase isolated breakthroughs. It was meant to build a coherent understanding of flight across all speed regimes. 
This philosophy directly influenced the transition from NACA to NASA. Under Dryden's guidance, high-speed aerodynamics, compressible flow, and boundary layer research were treated as foundational disciplines rather than niche specialties. Aircraft designers entering the jet age inherited a mature body of knowledge rather than fragmented wartime solutions. This reduced risk as aviation expanded into previously unreachable regimes. Dryden's work also shaped how engineers evaluated performance limits. Before his contributions, limits were often discovered through failure, unexpected instability, excessive drag, or structural overload. Afterward, limits were increasingly predicted in advance. Engineers could identify critical Mach numbers, boundary layer transition points, and compressibility effects before aircraft ever left the ground. This shift reduced accidents, shortened development cycles and improved reliability. As speeds continued to increase, Dryden's influence extended into supersonic and hypersonic research. Although he was not the architect of specific configurations like swept wings or area rule shaping, his work provided the scientific framework that allowed those concepts to function safely. Shock behavior, pressure interaction, and turbulence control all depended on the principles he helped formalize. Dryden's emphasis on measurement also changed experimental techniques, flow visualization, pressure sensing, and precision instrumentation became standard tools rather than experimental luxuries. Engineers learned to trust data over intuition, especially in regimes where intuition repeatedly failed this approach became essential as aircraft entered conditions where human perception lagged far behind physical reality. Beyond military aviation, Dryden's legacy extended into commercial flight. High subsonic airliners operate continuously near performance boundaries where compressibility affects matter. The reliability and efficiency expected in modern airline operations depend on controlled airflow behavior predictable drag characteristics, and stable boundary layers. These expectations trace back to the scientific standards Dryden helped establish. What makes Dryden's contribution distinctive is its invisibility. There is no single aircraft that carries his name. No dramatic configuration announces his work visually. Instead, his influence exists in the assumptions engineers no longer question. That high-speed airflow can be predicted that turbulence follows rules, that performance limits can be understood before they are encountered. This invisibility is not a weakness, it is evidence of success. When an idea becomes embedded deeply enough, it disappears from discussion and becomes infrastructure. Dryden's work reached that level. Modern aviation operates inside a framework he helped construct, often without awareness of its origin. Hugh L. Dryden did not make aircraft faster by pushing engines harder. He made them safer, more efficient, and more reliable by removing uncertainty. He transformed the high-speed flight from a hazardous frontier into a governed domain. That transformation did not win battles or set records, but it made sustained aviation power possible. In a field often defined by visible machines and dramatic achievements, Dryden's legacy is quieter. He ensured that when aircraft approach their limits, those limits are understood rather than discovered through loss. That contribution shaped aviation not at the moment of spectacle, but at the level where outcomes are decided before flight ever begins. And that is why Hugh L. Dryden belongs among the engineers who built the invisible systems that defined modern aviation.